Okay, so if you're watching this video, it's probably because you are having issues finding exploit 3 or determining what caused this exploit. So I'm going to go over it here. So first off, you need to open up that Capture 3 PCAP because the main issue is that you suspect an unauthorized hacker is exploiting the Bank of Virgil um, using the command execute tool to snoop on critical system data. So this could be anything. This could be IP addresses, transmission protocols, anything that allows that network architecture to essentially run. Um, so we need to find the packet. We need to identify the web page and some lines of code that could prevent this from happening. And then we need to document everything that we've done. So first off, just like we've done with the other two, I'm going to open the capture file. And then I'm going to open the web page because we're going to use this as a tool for us. And I do have the activity up here that I can reference back to because remember, this does give us some hints that we can go to. So it says all of our directions here. And then the hints we actually have. So we can use that HTTP content like we've been using for the other exploits. And then we have another one here. Uh, the Bank of Virgil command execution page executes a ping command. So we want to find a suspicious uh, output after a legitimate output. So there's going to be something legitimate in there, but then something that we got to kind of look for and see if it's weary on our end. So I'm going to go back to this. Log in here. Okay. So it's going to be under the command execution. So enter an IP address below. Let me see if it gives me anything. This is already captured, so it doesn't really matter. I don't even need to type anything in, but I was just wondering if it would give me something. Okay. So in here, I need to look for this page. I need to find this page. Ping, okay. Where are the stats? Three transmit. Okay, so it gives me what's going on. It's just a normal ping. So I'm going to filter this again. So I'm going to use that hint they gave me, the HTTP content type. So I'm going to filter it by that first. And then because it's telling me here that it's executing a ping, I like to take these highlighted words and assume that they are something that I can search for. So I'm going to search for ping in this. Got to be ping. I'm going to do it as a string because it's sending that ping. And I want to do it in my packet details. I'll make this full screen. Okay. So the first one we get here, 148. So I'm going to look in here and see if I can see anything weird. It's telling me ping for free. All right. Enter an IP address, ping, method. It's telling me what it does. It's a form. That looks fine. OK. Next one. OK, now it's actually executing a ping. So ping 172.30.0.13, which is the website. Looking for the request, three transmitted, three received, zero packets lost. It's a normal ping. It's a little like the one I just did. It, all it's doing is sending that data. OK. Again, sending that ping. OK. Ping stats, three, three received, zero lost. Perfect. What's this? OK, so this is weird because this is telling me that something else is being sent or hidden behind that normal ping. What this is saying is this data file is also being sent or changed with this ping happening, which, which isn't good. And if I look back at my thing here, exploiting the Bank of Virgil and snooping on system Critical system data, well, configuration file for setting system variables. That would be system critical data. 
So I'm going to assume this is the packet here. So 221, that's going to be our packet of, sp of sus, I guess you can say. I'm going to see if there's any more. Fine, 148, So there's only three. The other two checked out. They are sending those pings, so it's nice to be aware that they are pinging and they are receiving information. But if you look at this last one compared to the other two, this one's receiving that extra configuration file, and that's what we're looking for there. So it's doing that ping request. It's doing, doing that command execution. This is something we've referenced in previous activities. And if we're looking at that command execution and we're looking at the fact of, okay, command execute tool, can I find this anywhere else? Let me search in here again. Ping for free, that's the one we're on. 3-1, we haven't got there yet. I'm going to scroll down until I see something that we may have covered that's in our 2-3 lesson. 232, here we go, stopping the spread, the ping command. So it brings us right to the section, which is great. Activity ping tool. All right, stopping the spread of malware. It's showing us here how to set that not port. It's showing us the ping. It's showing us how it happens. It's documenting that. It's summarizing it. So if you're having any issues with this or any of these key words that you see, just search them here because that key word in our exploits down in where we're actually working on our exploit 3 command execute tool search it over here it pops up in one of those previous activities so it will give you some insight on that at the very least if you scroll up to this piece the training it does review all the tools that we've used up here so check that out as well okay so let me scroll back down so we found the packet, we got the Wireshark piece, we okay, identify the web page, few lines of code to prevent this. So now we have to identify how we're going to prevent this. We found where it is, right here. We found what it's doing. It's sending that configuration file, or it's exposing that configuration file. But now, how on the website can we prevent this from happening? And this is where we're going to go to that command execution, because that's what we're doing, and we're going to view the source. And just like we did for the cross-site scripting and the SQL injection, we're going to look at and compare the different models that they have. So if I click on bare, it'll show me the high, medium, and low. This is what you're going to take a screenshot of. This is showing that lines of code that could prevent this from happening. So if it's in a high um, security, it's going to, let's see, split the IP address, it's going to check the octets of the IP address. So it's going to do a full check on that IP. It's going to put it back together and then it's going to determine and execute the ping. If it's in a medium, it's not going to take apart the IP address anymore, but it's going to remove any random characters that are blacklisted, these ones, and it's going to determine and execute it. But if it's low, which it probably was in this case, it's just going to execute it. Determine OS and execute ping command. So there's no security whatsoever that's preventing anything from happening here. So this is what you're going to look at. This is what can prevent. This is a preventative method to this command execution. So that will be your last part of this. So you have all the pieces you need. You have what can prevent it. You have the packet number, and you have what is being exploited from the packet. Now you just need to write it up in a professional manner that you would present it to a client with.